Hey everyone, this is Stefan from Project Life Mastery, and today I'm excited to bring you guys my brother Andreas, who is a successful publisher on Amazon, Kindle publisher. Many of you guys have seen the previous videos and interviews that I've done with him over the years on my YouTube channel, sharing his journey, starting his online business with Kindle publishing, going through K-Money Mastery, building it up to a high six-figure, seven-figure income. He's also built his Amazon FBA business. And we haven't done an interview like this in about a year. And if you're a part of my K-Money Mastery program inside Full Disclosure, you probably have seen Andreas inside the Facebook group, a lot of trainings that we've done together. And we thought it'd be time to do another video, share with you guys what's the latest in the world of publishing on Amazon. I wanna have Andreas share with you guys a little bit about his progress, his journey, as well as a lot of what he's learned of what's working today in the world of publishing on Amazon. You know, Andreas also works with a lot of uh, people one-on-one. -on -one. He has his own coaching program that he works with a lot of people that are a part of K Money Mastery. And he's seen a lot of what's working, but also what's not working. And so we thought it'd be useful just to update you guys on a lot of that stuff. So Andreas, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Yeah, thanks for having me, bro. Um... Excited to be here. It's uh, it's been a whole year since we did one of these, and uh, I got I got a lot to share, and I'm I'm looking forward to answering uh, any questions that might help some of uh, the people out there in, in this business. As as we know, the business keeps changing, um, and so we got to stay on top of uh, of doing our best to 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 keep up with Amazon, and and uh, love to share today. Awesome. So I know we did you know that original video. Some of you guys that are watching this or listening might have. Remember that, that uh, back at your cabin um, up at 70 Mile House, uh, right on the lake where you know you, in a matter of months, got up to making, I think around $4,000, $5,000 a month from your publishing business. And you know since then we've done some other videos sharing your journey and I know you, know, you recently rebuilt your cabin, you tore it down, you built a brand new one that you have there, you've done some events there now too. Um, you know, since the last interview we did, I think about a year ago, do you want to share with people, you know, what's changed for you, how you've been able to continue to grow your business and, uh, you know, just where you're at today with uh, Kindle Publishing? Yeah. So for me, um, you know, I started way back in 2014, had some great success in my uh, first four or five months as we shared in that vi first video we did together and uh, motivated me to, to keep to, to kind of go all in uh, into it. Um, so decided to focus more on it. And obviously, um, over the next year um, into 2015, continued to have success, hit some pretty big numbers, uh, which then, you know, obviously continued to motivate me to see how far I could take it, but also realizing the opportunity in physical products. So I, uh, I, I ventured into that and, uh, and, and started to have some sex, su success with that um, and, and, and get some pro products out there. And, and kind of just kept doing at both of them um, all the way through 2015 and then 2016. And then, of course, we did uh, our video in, in January, February of last year. And, and at that point, I had established, a, you know, a, a decent portfolio, you know, seven, eight hundred books, um, you know, as a publisher, uh, generating revenues as, as, as high as 70, 80 grand in a month. Um, and... Uh, um, and then physical product was doing really well. You know, uh, I had helped my wife with her business. I had mine um, combined. You know, we were pushing at about 70, uh, 60, 70 grand there. So we were doing really well, you know, making over six figures a month in both businesses. Um, and then uh, and then 2017 uh, was kind of a crazy year because, um, you know, I, I noticed that, you know, over the two and a half years I'd been in this business, in the online business dealing with Amazon that there was a tendency of, you know, a, a lot of changes that would occur within Amazon. And so uh, I started to focus on creating an online business that allowed me not to become, not so much dependent on Amazon, but to use them more uh, as, a, as, as a great funnel of traffic and customers and, and try to build my own business with my own audience um, and, 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 and so that I can continue to have repeat customers instead of always looking for new customers, uh, which tends to happen on the Amazon platform. So since I had grown a big portfolio, I had a presence, a lot of, I've learned a lot, 
I figured the next step for me was to to grow beyond Amazon and 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 try to build a business where I would build relationships with consumers and continue to be able to sell my product over and over again, or more importantly, upsell them possibly um, maybe from an ebook to a physical product and and then whatever else I could create, uh, whether it's a series of books uh, or you know um, going into another. Uh, platform like Create Space and Audible, and and just gaining experience and in, in, in learning how to do that instead of just creating a product, putting it on Amazon, and just trying to make money from one month to another. I wanted to get, you know, repeat customers, and I and I wanted to build an audience, build a list, and so that was primarily my focus in 2017, uh, which led me to really focusing on building a brand. And, and I guess that's been the major transformation for me uh, since I started this business is that when I started, prime, my business revolved around Amazon and the brand was all about Amazon, whereas today everything that I build is, is primarily built on you know, my business and my brand and is always looking for a way to uh, basically steal the customers from Amazon but use that, that great platform that it is because it's there's so much traffic there and so many people there that you know that it's 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 still the number one resource to go and it's the best way to learn the best way to build your business but I think for me I'm at, I'm at a point now 1100 books uh, you know making that kind of revenue that I wanted to kind of challenge myself to see if I could build my own audience and 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 market outside of Amazon and, and me being in coaching and helping so many people in that area, it just made sense for me to, to, to evolve into that path and then I could help people as well. Awesome. So you've, you know, it sounds like you've continued publishing, you've grown a lot in a lot of ways or building your brand. You know, I think a lot of people, you know, they are watching this and they just want to get started. You know, what would you often recommend for someone just getting started? Because I think a lot of people, they might hear how many books you have or myself or other people and they think, hey, you know, I'm just going to put out uh, you know, hundreds of books, but often, as you know, that's not the best strategy maybe to start with. You should probably, you've got a system that allows you to be able to publish a lot of books. So somebody that's getting started, what would you recommend for them as, you know, just one of the best strategies for them to, you know, maybe start making at least a couple hundred bucks or a couple thousand dollars and, uh, then be able to grow and scale from there. Well, I, I think first of all, um, the, the individual, whoever it is, has to determine whether they have patience for business because business, as you know, anybody who gets into business and yourself gained so much experience in this area over the last decade that you have to have patience. And, and, and for somebody new coming into, into this business um, or any business in general, but especially in the online, you're going to have to understand that concept of patience because you know, to build a business, to get into all of these things, to learn, to publish, to create products, to market, you know, even the found, all, of, all the foundational work that's required when you first come in, I think that's a key attribute that you need. So you need to evaluate yourself and say, am I a patient individual or am I someone who, a, who, who wants results fast or who wants to, to take action fast and who wants to uh, beat the learning curve. If you're someone who has patience and understands that concept, then then take your time. You know, publish a few books, uh, go through the KMM video program because by far that's, in my opinion, the best one out there that's going to get you uh, to learn the foundation of this business. Um, you know, take your time. Don't don't try to publish 25 or 50 or 100 books. Try to learn the process of of research and creating a product and improving the product and engaging with people uh, to get feedback on that product and 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 just learn the fundamentals of, of managing a business and and hiring people and and outsourcing and you know all those little attributes if you're an individual who who lacks the patience who is a little bit more aggressive and who who wants to not necessarily go through everything themselves and and, and wants to grow a big business and maybe a little faster, then my advice to you would be maybe because you're going to be doing things at a, at a faster pace, then, then maybe seek out the help. You know, get a professional, someone who's been through it, that can spend time teaching you a system 
of how you can essentially skip that learning curve and at the same time not become so inefficient in the business just because you're scaling up too fast. And that's probably a big common problem that happens with people is that they start to do too much and and they're not and it's hard enough already when you're just learning, let alone when you're when you're doing it ten times more than maybe the average person. So so that would be my advice to people is number one, figure out what kind of individual you are in that in that way. And and if you if you do want to challenge yourself and do it on your own, which this business is anybody can do it, so that's not an issue. Um, then then just take your time, go through the videos, understand that each book that you create, you, you know you're not you're not going to make a thousand dollars on one book or or five thousand or ten thousand. I mean it takes time, and and you know you're going to have if you're doing things right and you're learning, then the second book should be better than the first, and the third book should be better than the second. And you should be improving. Now, sometimes the money doesn't show that, but the quality can. You know, there are other things to measure in your business. I think that's another thing I'd like to bring up is that, you know, most young entrepreneurs that enter into business and if if can if, if creating or publishing is going to be that business, then I think they need to understand that the learning curve, the opportunity cost of learning is going to be how much money you possibly make. And 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 when you get into a business, you can't always necessarily look at the ROI of how much money you're going to make on your investment because you're learning too. You're gaining experience and knowledge and skills and, and there's a cost to that. And that cost is maybe the short-term success in, in, in getting a return in the terms of dollars. Um, you can understand that because, you know, yourself, how many years did it take you in the online world to to gain skills. I mean, you went through SEO, you went through, um, you know, you, you went through marketing online, different, different types of projects before you reached KMM and, uh, or created KMM and, and did your publishing. I mean, we've all been through so many businesses that, you know, for us, the ones that have experience, things happen a little faster. For a newbie coming in, you, you really have to understand that, that, you know, this is a great business because, it doesn't cost a lot to get into relative to most businesses today. Um, you know, it's inexpensive. It's it's a great opportunity for people that you know have a few hours every week to to start a venture and to put a little bit of capital at it. Um, keep in mind that a business to grow needs nurturing. The more you put into it, the more potential you have to get back in it, and that's going to be the same for any business, not just a, an online business like this. So, I think my advice would be. Number one, um, you know, when you get into this business today, you know, what's your goals? You know, set your goals after you figure out the type of individual you are. Are you someone who can do it yourself, have the patience, the understanding uh, of the process? And, and if not, then, then get, a, get a mentor or get a coach or, or get into a partnership, a mastermind or, or, you know, some influencers that can keep you uh, you know, teaching you things that necessarily you might not learn uh, maybe on Google or, or, you know, in KMM or out there. Like even if you just get, uh, if you're lucky enough to, to know another publisher who you can become friends with and, 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 and look up to in regards to steady progress uh, because you want to scale up and you want to learn faster than, than maybe people that have a little bit more patience. And, and, I, and I would say if you were going to ask me, um, maybe like what's the biggest reason why people fail in this business? I can probably dive right into that because it just seems like it would make sense. Um, I, I would say that that people expectations, uh, especially a, a, a young entrepreneur coming into into the online world, I think their expectations might not be uh, rational. Uh, I think they're far greater and, and whether that's just the online world constantly marketing, you know, all the great things that are happening and not the, the grinding and, and the peaks and valleys and, and, the, and, and everything that an entrepreneur will go through to get to success. Maybe you can fault the online world a little bit for that because, you know, obviously that advertises better than, than maybe, uh, you know, an entrepreneur that's grinding for five years and then makes millions of dollars. Um, you know, in, in telling that story. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think the biggest reason why it's hard for people is because they jump into it with an expectation that doesn't make sense, like a goal. 
that, you know, I want to make $10,000 in, in four months and, and because Andreas, you did it. And, and the reality is, is the business has changed. Um, there's a lot more demands today. There's a higher expectation in regards to quality. Uh, consumers are, are spending their money differently than three years ago, four years ago. Um, you know, it's just a number of factors. So you can't, you, just because someone did it in regards to the a, a nominal amount doesn't mean that you should set that goal. Maybe you should set a goal uh, of, of, you know, a smaller goal to start out with. You could have your long-term goal, but a smaller goal that, that you can build your confidence with that will keep that momentum going and, and staying motivated and inspired so that you keep grinding in this business. And, um, and so I, I think that that for me would be if I met someone today who came into this business, uh, that uh, those would be the kind of the points that I would focus on, um, you know, it, it, to to maybe to be in it for a long term, uh, you know, because we see a lot of people come in and they're good for five months, six months, maybe a year, and then they sort of fizzle out and disappear. Um, I've been in it for four years. You've been in it for a long time. There's a few people that um, that I know, you know, a, a dozen, you know, people that I've associated throughout those four year journey that are still in it, doing it. Uh, that I talk to on a regular basis, and that's just because you know they 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 had good fundamentals. They built a strong foundation. They you know they they took their time, um, and they started at, at the bottom, right at the beginning, and and set realistic goals. Yeah, you know I totally agree. Everyone's totally different. I mean, it you can't compare yourself to someone else. Everyone else is at a different starting point. They have different habits, different work ethic, different levels of efficiency, different amount of time available that they're dedicating, different amount of money they're putting into it. Uh, a lot of different factors, different keywords and niches and, and, and markets that they're getting into. And so I think, you know, as you said, oftentimes what I do is I recommend people, you have the result goal, but you also have the process goal. The process is more important than the results. Because the process will lead to the results and you know there's a lot of milestones they can celebrate along the way which is number one maybe just you know getting a book written getting a cover done for it publishing publishing that on amazon that's a big accomplishment that's a goal achieved that someone should measure that they have a hundred percent control over regardless of whether or not it makes them any money right and so those are things you could probably celebrate get confidence from and then once you've done that then okay let's market that book, let's do a free promotion on it, let's get some reviews, let's get some traffic to it, getting those initial sales. And I think, you know, having those smaller milestones and, and, and having, you know, more of a realistic expectation, I think is the key thing. And then just scaling it up from there. But I, I agree. I think a lot of people that are so attached to the short term and uh, when they don't see results fast enough, they get discouraged and they give up. So it's all about the long term. Yeah, and um, and, I also and, and to celebrate those goals, those process goals, because the process will stay with you forever. It's not short term, right? Your results can be short term, your results could be long term, but your process, if you gain enough experience from it, that 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 will pay dividends for you for the rest of your life because every skill that you gather, every moment that you have that that gains confidence for you, you'll be able to contribute to some other process in your business that will pay dividends in the long term and that and your results at in your long term goals will even be more significant. So I think that's important. So if if you're not celebrating those little goals, you know, because maybe you don't you know you need people around you to remind you of those, you know, whether it's a friend or whether uh you know a, a family member or whether it's a a, a colleague or a or a mentor, you know, that's where they, you guys can get together and you can reflect on those because it's in those moments that you build confidence that allows you to keep moving forward um, in your business, right? Awesome. So what would you say is the potential right now of publishing on Amazon? You know, right now at the time of this video, uh, it's 2018 and obviously there's a lot of things that have changed. Some people still wonder, can I still make money from publishing on Amazon? Uh, so what do you see, what's, you know, what's going to happen, the potential moving forward in 2018 and beyond? Well, Amazon's gone through a lot of changes, and and I think what Amazon has 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 done, uh, based on everything that I've learned, especially over the last year, is that they they put a larger emphasis on quality uh, within their platform. So so they're they're working really hard at adjusting their algorithm and adjusting their site so that you know people or, or authors or publishers uh, who create books. 
uh, and put them on the platform uh, have to create quality or the ones that have are getting rewarded with being with with higher exposure and so you, you'll notice that you know one little tip uh, where you can see this change occurring currently is that if you're doing a keyword search for instance and you type in a keyword into the search bar uh, you'll notice that some keywords they'll what will happen is when you hit search uh, for example if we chose uh, the keyword money and and put it into the search bar you'll see that the screen pauses and what happens is that Amazon redirects that search into a subcategory of personal finance or whatever the default is for the people's browsing history it might be money management it might be some other uh, default so what they've done is they've taken you know the 150 160 thousand books that are in there and they're breaking them down into smaller categories making it easier for the consumer to find products because under the existing search the algorithm wasn't working to find quality there would be random books that showed up that might be garbage you know somebody putting in a 20 page book and 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 getting fake reviews and 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 getting you know the loopholes within Amazon whereas Amazon's trying to remove that and 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 putting pressure on people when they publish and create books that you know hey you know you're selling a product to the consumer and and we're bringing the traffic so we got to make sure that you're doing your due diligence and create a decent product and so you know they're they're making it harder for the loopholes but what they're doing is they're making their platform more efficient for consumers and building a stronger relationship with the consumer that when they go there they're going to find quality in that process while they do that they are creating a new loophole and essentially what that is is that they're creating a real estate on their site and so now if all good books or quality books are starting to show when the algorithm is adjusted on certain search keywords primarily large search keywords then you're gonna get high quality books and so what that does is that then Amazon can turn around and say okay well if you want to get there faster all you gotta do is do Amazon ads and you can get on the first or second page so strategically I think and I and I kinda of saw this happening when I got into physical product in 15 when I used Amazon ads and saw how big it was in physical business and and predicted that you know eventually this would catch on with KDP and Amazon would have a way to you know make some money from the publisher but at the same time you know allow the consumer to find quality a lot easier and I think you gotta remember that that whenever you're in a business your number one customer counts like your consumer counts and and quality counts so if you focus on that then you're gonna be fine in this business and so I think even though they've made it maybe to rank a little bit harder it, you know organically I think it's actually better for the business I think there's more opportunities to make money because it, it for those that work on creating quality and work on all of those attributes to do that you know good content good books um, good research good marketing you know all those dynamics if you work hard on those and you're and you become good at them you're gonna have even more success on Amazon because your book is probably going to be able to sustain getting a higher ranking for a longer period of time when that quality gets recognized and so I think there's a longer term profit here now that's being created uh, within Amazon and, 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 and in the short term I think that they're making it harder for people that think they can just use the Amazon for publish a hundred books and throw them out there and and in one month they're gonna make twenty thousand dollars no no because it's almost better to have 10 good books with good quality content, unique content, good research, uh, good sources, um, and, and, and looking at the consumer rather than trying to just cash in in the short term. So I think moving forward, I think you're going to see more and more of that where, you know, we got to remember when I started this business and when you started this business, Steph, Amazon was not the leader in, in ebooks, right? I mean, they were going after that market. They wanted to be the world's online ebook store. And, and, and so they still had a lot of competition with Barnes and Noble and Lulu and all these other platforms that were out there, Ingram Sparks. But today they are the world's leader. And so now their, their strategy has changed where now they know everybody goes to Amazon first. And so they know that they have to keep the consumer happy and it's not about volume anymore. It's necessarily about quality. And so they've got to make their platform show the quality, not to favor anyone, but to show the quality. So if 
If you've got good strategies such as driving traffic, uh, getting good feedback, engaging with your audience, improving your product, uh, you know, creating content that's unique that, you know, not everybody has out there that, you know, I mean, I don't know how many books I've seen paleo diet or meditation or chakras, everybody's publishing those, you know, publish something that the consumer wants that there's not 50,000 other books of. Um, and, and I know that's hard. I know that's the challenge here, but that's going to be the difference moving forward in the future. It's not going to be you know, just pumping products out there, it's going to be building quality, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, that's the only long-term sustainable strategy in this or any business, because, you know, you can maybe in the short term make some money just, you know, cutting corners with quality here and there, but long-term to have a book that's going to make you money months from now, years from now, it's going to come down to the quality because, you know, if your book isn't being updated, being improved, being made better, then it's going to lead to bad reviews. It's going to, you know, drop down in the rankings. And I think that's all, uh, one thing a lot of publishers don't do is they're not improving. They're not getting better. They're not. They're not actually engaging with the customer and actually taking a step back before they even publish the book. Look at what are what's the market wants. You know, not just based on the keyword, but even looking at the other books out there, even researching them, maybe even going through some of the other books. Uh, you know, looking at the reviews, the positive and the bad reviews of those other competing books in that market, and then actually thinking about, okay, well, this is what my book will include. This is what I can do to differentiate myself or add a little bit more value or position my book or whatever that might be. And I think that the people that I've seen that succeed with this, they they use their head a little bit more in a way. I, I don't know what other way to put it, but they um, are a little bit more creative. They kind of go step outside the box a little bit. They they think about things in a different way, and they put a little bit more. You know, they take a little bit, take things a little bit further than everyone else is doing. Because if you just do the bare minimum, you know, you're not going to get great results from that. Everyone else is just doing the bare minimum. But if you go beyond that, and you actually put some more thought into your book, and you try to improve it, and you, and you get some feedback on it, you make it better and better and better. But it's the exact same thing with every platform out there. Like, you know, if you were to ask me about YouTube or Google or Facebook or anything else out there, Google, YouTube, Facebook, they all want to reward quality, you know, and they want, you know, they're not going to, you know, you can do everything you can to uh, as a loophole to try to get yourself to number one. But to stay there and to be on top, it's going to require you to do quality that's what I've learned with YouTube and even just trying to rank in Google and whatnot. And if you do that, everything gets taken care of after that because Amazon will promote you, uh, YouTube will promote you, Google will promote you. You know, they, they give you that boost and they reward those that are producing quality. Yeah, I, I, I think the biggest change I would say is the fact this is a real business now. When I got into, into publishing, I, I, I don't know if I, can, I could say it was a real business. I, I honestly think... It, 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 it was it was easy in the fact that you could get away with not knowing how to run a business and you could just put content out there and 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 that's just because the, the platform was so different Amazon was you know it, wanting content lots of it they wanted they were soaking it all up and putting it at, at, at up on top of the rankings and doing all that whereas today every book that's submitted they're looking for something unique something different something out of the box something that maybe they haven't they haven't had a chance to market before to share to before and and that doesn't mean it has to be like a like a book that nobody's necessarily ever seen i think it's got to be something that when amazon checks it and and it goes through its filters and its process it's looking for leads right every day amazon's looking for leads and ebooks are the best leads that they have because they're inexpensive and so and and they've got KUU and they've got a lot of tools where they can basically give that off at, at, at the cost of the publisher and they can upsell them on so much more on their site. And so they're looking for those leads. So if you have even a chapter that's unique and different than everyone else's, that is something that will get their get on their radar and they'll promote it. What they're not looking for is where, you know, you're you're publishing a book that there's ten thousand other books exactly the same where the, the publisher all they did was learn a program on how to put slap some stuff together and put it out there and utilize the program. I just don't think that that works anymore in this business. I think that it takes a little bit more commitment and a little bit more hard work. But 
you know, I, I'm not going to lie to people. Your business is hard work. It, it's, it's always been. And that's the only reason I've had success in this business is because when I got into it, I realized that my advantage was that I could work hard at this and I could apply myself and I could do things that are unique and different and, and think beyond the outside the box and do differently than everyone else. And I was confident that I would excel and that, you know, my products would sell and, and they would get to the point where they are today. And, and today I keep working at that. I keep trying to find a new angle so that I can stay one step ahead of everybody else that's publishing and creating products, even, you know, authors, real authors like the Stephen Kings and so forth. And so I'm constantly trying to figure out ways to do that. And, and 2017 was a breakout year for me, I think, because that's when I started focusing on brands, creating brands uh, in, in regards to my publishing and it made it so much easier to engage with an audience and so much easier to sell the next version of my product or you know a second volume or a, a series and then of course because I'm in physical it just made sense that I could easily upsell uh, so long as I combine all of those strategies together and 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 so there was, it was a big year for me in that regards and I feel way better about my business today because it's a real business you know I got real people that I manage that work for me and, and they're consistent and we've got a process and a system and it doesn't matter what's happening on Amazon. It doesn't matter how many changes they make. I'm still generating revenue, a consistent revenue. And that's because I've built good products and, I, and I've stayed ahead of the curve that way. Right. And what would you say? We've already kind of shared, you already shared a few things. What do you, would you say are the keys to success for this business moving forward? You know, you shared a bit about the mindset you shared, you know, working hard, obviously quality books, but uh, you know, building the brand, what do you see as the keys to success um, in 2018 and beyond in this business? Uh, you know, I think in 2018, um, I, I think as Amazon keeps evolving, uh, you know, for, for those that have been in, in online for a while dealing with Amazon, you're seeing that, you know, every six or eight months, there's changes that occur. Uh, I think be better prepared for those changes. So if you're learning something uh, towards your business, Ask yourself, is this a short-term trick or is this a long-term plan? And I think invest your time and your energy and your and 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 all of that, you know, your energy and your focus and your drive. Invest it in learning things that can stay with you long term. Now the online world, it's hard because the online world's always going to evolve. You see it on Facebook, you see it on YouTube, you see it on all the different social media platforms on Amazon and, and so forth because they're growing. Technology continues to grow and the online world continues to grow. So I'm not talking about that because you're going to be forced to evolve. I'm just saying, you know, if, if there's there's a lot of white noise out there and if you're paying attention to the white noise, the, the, the short term tricks, you know, like the review swapping and and the fake audiences that you can put on Instagram and, and you're following on YouTube and all of that that's going to catch up to you because you're going to play this vicious game that is going to eventually six months from now, you're not going to have a business anymore. You're going to start from scratch again and you're going to be frustrated and you're going to quit. You're going to, you're going to blame the environment. You're going to blame the platforms when it really was yourself. So I think focus on information that allows you to gain skills that are more of a long-term vision. Uh, and if you do that, you'll instantly groom yourself to understand patience a little bit more and a better mindset. Um, I think another thing is, you know, the business is, it's a business now. So you're going to have to understand that there's going to be days of grinding. And if you're not grinding, then you're not growing. Honestly, in business, you have to be constantly grinding because if you're not, there's going to be how many other people out, out there that are willing to do that until you make it. Until you can cash in and, and you can turn back and say, this has impacted and changed my life forever. Until you get to that point, you've got to be committed to that grind and, and working hard and, and making sacrifices. So I think, I think as we move forward, Amazon's going to force that out of, out of entrepreneurs. So if you're not going to be committed to that um, and you're going to do this as a hobby, that, well, that's fine too. Um, so long as you understand that, you know, the results are going to be, tr going to treat you like it's a hobby. Um, so I think... I think definitely that would be an attribute. I think number two is is you're gonna have to be you're gonna have to make a little bit bigger of an investment. I think the days of of you know hiring an, a, a freelancer on Upwork and getting the, the the lowest dollar that you possibly can, fifty bucks for a book, 
uh, of writing and then hiring a, a three dollar person on Fiverr for a cover. Those days are long gone because you just got too many entrepreneurs today that are that are hungry and motivated and inspired by people like yourself and and all the influence that other entrepreneurs out there like Gary V and, and Tony Robbins. The social media is just all around us inspiring us every day about how 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 we can work hard and we can have success as an entrepreneur so your investment in time energy and and money you know you're gonna have to make a little bit more of an investment and and pay for quality you know um, spend a little bit more time and, and find the right people uh, to work for you um, that's not to say you're gonna get it right okay don't get me wrong just because you spend more time or spend more money doesn't mean that you're gonna solve all your problems there's still a learning curve there and you need to understand that so, but what I'm saying is that don't be proud because you got the cheapest writer out there and you can put a product out there for a hundred bucks and nobody else can. That maybe is a sign to tell you that you're, you're doing something wrong because a majority of the people are paying for quality. A majority of the people are spending their time trying to create a unique cover that might cost them 20 bucks maybe. Or, you know, in the marketing, there's a majority of people that are setting up Facebook ads or Google ads or a, even a fan page and you know, not necessarily everybody has the money to pay for advertising but even if they're doing it themselves and, and doing it on Instagram or Facebook or or you know Pinterest or YouTube or whatever their marketing strategy is and they're doing it themselves they're investing themselves more uh, which means they're learning more and I think that's going to be required for 2018 and beyond to have success in the online world. Yeah, it kind of goes back to not doing the bare minimum, right? Going above and beyond everyone else. I know for myself when I started, I didn't have money to outsource a lot of books. So I, I wrote a lot myself. Or, you know, you could when you get your book back, you can go through it and make it better and add to it and, you know, maybe put in some extra effort that no one else really is. Or if you're hiring a writer, then give them that direction or that guidance and, and kind of work with them more on what you're looking for so that you can get a better quality product. But um that's awesome. I totally agree. So I want to wrap things up. I know you do a lot of coaching now. You're working with a lot of people, uh, a lot of people that you've helped get to the six figure uh, a year point in their publishing business. Do you want to share with people a little bit more about the coaching that you offer and how they can learn more about it? So, um, so you know, today I'm, I'm, I've got a lot of different coaching that I'm doing. I'm, I'm coaching people stri strictly on the publishing, you know, what I did through my process in, in my first year. Uh, or in, in my what I would do in my first year as a publisher uh, and, and I walk people through that uh, for as much coaching as they need um, you know and then from there I've got branding I, I, I focus a lot now today coaching a lot of people on branding so that it makes it a little easier for them to publish and to focus on an area that they're passionate about and then how they can monetize on that and on the back end whether it's uh, you know whether it's through your AMM program or way, whether it's through physical products, ASM or whoever, um, you know, and how to monetize, how to bundle that together, you know, how to create multiple revenues in a brand. Uh, so I spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, of course, physical products, you know, uh, I'm coaching that. So, you know, I got a lot of people that I've coached that have done a lot of things and they want to know how to put it all together and, and, and how to optimize when you've got all these revenue streams and, and, and how to become efficient. So I'm helping people with that. And then I've got some other programs such as investing and real estate, for those who want to diversify and 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 have some extra cash flow and and uh, and I'm really enjoying that part because that's my passion is investing in real estate so it's kind of a it's a real reward for me when I get to, to coach people in that area um, um, but I would recommend for for everyone if they're getting in the online world you know build your cash flow first maybe um, and then when you when you're comfortable with that then start looking at alternatives to diversify. Um, so that's that's primarily what I'm doing. Um, you know, branding is is probably the most popular today in large part the publishing brand, just because you know it, it's making it easier for people not to have to like find all of these niches and spend so much time researching across areas and then trying to pick the right book where we can monetize on no matter what your niche is, whether it's health, whether it's fitness, whether it's uh, investing, whether it's uh, gardening, it, it doesn't really matter. There's way to, ways to monetize and to create uh, a, a nice brand around that, which allows you then to get into blogging and YouTubing and, and all of those types of things and, and new skills that you can gain, which obviously pay dividends in other businesses. So, so I'm spending a lot of time on all those areas, uh, pretty busy with it. 
Um, you know, and, and you can learn more about it on my website. Uh, if you go to maverickpublishing.ca, www.maverickpublishing.ca and, and you'll see at the top coaching and, and you'll see all the different programs. Uh, and, and if you want some more information on them, don't understand what we put there on the site, just reach out to me privately on, on Facebook and, and I can answer any of your questions there and, and, and help you set you up if you're interested to get going. Awesome. Sounds great. Well, I want to thank you uh, for taking the time. Highly recommend Andreas's coaching and um, you know going deeper with it because he's truly committed himself to the mastery of this process and and has helped a lot of people be able to build their business. So, thanks again. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. Subscribe for more videos and check out MaverickPublishing.ca. I'll have a link to that below in the description. Thanks for watching.